Hi everyone, welcome to the new video. So uh, I haven't brought this uh, video from very long time, like the DevOps interview question. So I thought let me bring some DevOps interview question uh, today uh, for my viewers. So <clears throat> basically we will have a little bit of revision. So yeah, let's go. So these questions are mix of questions and these are total 10 questions. We'll discuss the answer also side by side. So first question is what kind of scans we include in CI CD pipeline? So generally in our in any organization when we perform when we create CI CD pipeline, we need to uh, keep uh, you know care of the security so whenever we are building after build we need to test we do need to do unit test we need to do code quality scan uh, then after that once <clears throat> all these scans uh, you know there are other kinds of scan also like sas scan um, dash scan and uh, dash scan is like checking for api vulnerabilities uh, SAS scan is also kind of security uh, test and then you, know, you have a uh, sync scan then uh, after that when you uh, create a docker image then you have a scan for uh, you know uh, uh, for scanning uh, the vulnerability for a docker image so you have a image scan uh, there are many uh, scans related to that too like aqua scan uh, or container image scan that is done what actually we include in these kind of scans that we'll discuss in one of the video in details i'm thinking to make that video that what actually in unit test what actually in uh, sync scan sat scan or what you say aqua scan or container image scan or uh trivi scan uh, sonar cube scan what actually we do we'll make a detailed video about it then uh, what are Kubernetes service and why are they useful? So, you know, Kubernetes service, we all know we have cluster IP, we have uh, node port service, we have a load balancer, we have ingress. But, you know, when these kind of questions, when it is very easy, when people ask questions straightforward, like what are Kubernetes service and you can easily explain it. But when this question is a little bit twisted, like uh, they'll ask you, that how your pods communicate with each other like or how your pod is communicating with its database so how your uh, how uh, your end user will access the pod so all these kind of questions when they are twisted the answer remains kubernetes service because kubernetes services are helping in the communication whether it is pod to pod communication whether it is pod to uh, pod to cluster or whether it is end user uh, accessing the cluster uh, accessing the cluster so these questions can be twisted but the answer remains kubernetes service so then how cicd pipeline gets triggered so there is a uh, so there must be github webhook which is triggering but in every push that github webhook will uh, you know uh, uh, will trigger the pipeline but this is a jenkins pipeline when we say or we can run it manually also or we can schedule the pipeline too but when it comes to github action workflow where what happens we uh, there is there are options that we can trigger it in pull push or we can uh, you know a kind of events or we can also run it manually so it depends like what kind of branch you have maybe in uh, in your uh, feature branch you have you are triggering it on every push because you are doing testing on those branches so you are triggering the pipeline in every push so you can mention that for push event you can trigger the pipeline for feature branches but when it's a master or a main branch you are not uh, testing there so maybe you have you keep an option of running it manually so that whenever we require we do the deployment it is not happening on push so it is basically uh, everything is planned according to the security that 
okay when we will trigger the pipeline for which branch because maybe your main branch is doing the deployment maybe your release branch is doing the deployment so we have to mention that at which push event or pull event or which event uh, it should trigger the pipeline for which branch that everything should be mentioned and that is a standard workflow what is a git branching strategy so i have already made one video for this git branching strategy where i've already explained so you can refer that video but in uh, you know just to summarize git branching strategy is that you are creating whenever you have to work on um, if there is a main branch then there is a develop branch then there are feature branches then there are release branches and there are hot fix branches so uh, feature branches are taken from the develop branch and whenever any per person any individual any developer anyone who has to work they take a branch from a develop branch uh, they take a create a new branch their feature branch they do their testing everything and when the testing is fine they merge it into develop branch then if the release and then after everything in develop branch if the testing is fine then we merge into main branch release branch is something when from that at that point of time we are going to have a release so there is a release version like we are going to release our new version with version 1 so we are going to take a branch okay which has all the code everything updated so maybe we are taking it from master branch and we are doing the deployments hotfix branch are something which are just for fixing the bugs we take from the master branch merge it into branch master branch and do our deployments uh do our fixes can ansible control node can be installed on windows so this is very very crucial point the control nodes where ansible is the main ansible when where we are installing that ansible can the ansible be installed on windows no windows on windows if we have wsl then only we can install ansible because ansible needs you know linux version or unix based version server so from where we are going to manage or from where we are you know we write a playbook we execute the uh, you know commands from that that server should be windows not linux Okay, that server should be linux not windows okay so can we manage windows servers here yes ansible server cannot be installed on uh, windows server but from ansible if you have to run playbook on a linux server or windows server you can do that how you manage secrets secrets in organization they are mostly kept in a vault so you should have in secret manager so you should have idea about how to access the vault how to access a secret manager how we can fetch those secrets how we can use those secrets in our script so if suppose the secret manager is there in aws manager so how we are going to fetch those secret and then use it in our uh, pipeline or something so that is so that's it then what kind of scan we should do for docker images i have already talked about it but yeah i as i as i told you that we are going to bring one video where we'll discuss the in a detailed manner about all the scans so yeah then your ci cd pipeline takes too long how do you optimize it basically where it is getting stuck that point that stage should be investigated why is it taking time we should check the logs we should have a timeout policy also so that after so after 10 minutes our pipeline should fail it should not be in a hanging state then after checking the logs we should try to debug the issue and optimize whether it's a runner issue whether is it's a issue in our script or whether it's a looping issue we should try to optimize it then the last is what's the difference between git pull and git fetch so uh, git pull is something that we need to so git pull will bring the changes whatever when you do git pull it will bring all the changes to your working stage but git fetch will not bring the changes to your working stage you have to do uh, 
git merge after it so git fetch plus git merge will bring all the changes to your working directory your local working directory or stage so that's the difference and that's all for today's video so that's all for today's video i hope it's helpful please let me know your views in the comment section till then take care bye